Hey everyone, in this problem we have to find the minimum distance from the plane x minus y plus c equals 5 to the point 1, negative 3, comma 4. Let's try to work this out. So recall a given two points, say x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2. The distance between the points is given by the following formula. So it's the square root of... And then you just subtract the components. So it's x1 minus x2, parentheses squared, plus y1 minus y2, parentheses squared, plus, and then z1 minus z2, and then parentheses squared. So in this problem, all we have to do is replace these points uh, with what we have in the problem, and just make this small, right? The goal is to make the distance small as possible. Want to make this make small. Okay, so let's go ahead and replace stuff. So I think we can replace the x1, the y1, and the z1 with x, y, z. Let's try that. This will be x minus, and then x2, that can be our 1. And then y2 is our negative 3, and z2 is our 4. So it'll be x minus 1 squared plus and then y is just, y1 is just y, so y minus, oh, it's y minus negative 3, so it's y plus 3. I haven't done this problem yet, so I've got to be careful. And then z1 is z, and then z2 is 4, so z minus 4 squared. All right, and the goal is to make this as small as possible. So this is a function of uh, three variables. It might be a good idea to maybe write it as a function of two variables. So maybe we can take this initial equation up here and solve for z. So we have x minus y plus z equals 5. So we can subtract x and add y. Subtract x and add y. So that will give us, uh, uh, it goes away. We get z equals 5 minus x plus y. So we have little d is equal to the square root of, then we have x minus 1 parentheses squared plus, and then y plus 3, parentheses squared. And then z is just what we worked out, so it'll be parentheses 5 minus x plus y, right? That's our z, right? This is our z, and then minus 4 squared. And again, the goal is to make this as small as possible, right? We want to minimize d, right? d is the distance from an arbitrary point in the plane, which we called x, y, z, to our point uh, 1, negative 3, 4. Okay. So the square root function will be small whenever what is inside the square root is small. Okay, let me say that again. So the square root of x, let's think in 2D. This is the square root of x. This is y equals the square root of x. The square root of x is small whenever x is small, right? It's an increasing function. So when x goes this way to the left, right, when x gets small, the y value gets small. So we're going to focus on what's inside these. We're just going to minimize this circled piece. So I'm going to give that a new name. I'm going to call that little f. So we're now the problem of making d small turns into the problem of making what's inside d small uh, because the square root is small whenever what's inside it is small. So this is going to be x minus 1 squared plus and then y plus 3 squared plus and then parentheses 5 minus x plus y minus 4. I remember when I first saw this years ago in a book, and I was thinking, like, what did they do? Did they just square both sides? No, it's not what we're doing. Again, the square root is small whenever what's inside is small. So an equivalent problem would be to just make this small. So we want to make this small. So to do that, we'll use something called the second partials test. So we'll, we'll compute uh, first the first partial derivative. So first, we'll take both first partials and set them equal to 0. And that will give us our critical point. So let's see. Taking the partial with respect to x. So in the first piece, we have x minus 1 squared. So we put the 2 in the front. Then we get x minus 1 times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1, all right, chain rule. The derivative of y plus 3 squared is 0 because we're taking a partial with respect to x. And unfortunately, there is an x here, so we do have to take this derivative. So plus 2, parentheses, 5 minus x plus y minus 4, oh, this is really sneaky, times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1, right? Because 
the derivative of x is negative 1, and the derivative of everything else is 0. Okay, we want to set this equal to 0. All right. Um, okay, let's take the partial of f with respect to y. So this derivative here is 0. This one will be 2y plus 3. It's pretty tricky. Uh, times the derivative of the inside, which is 1. And now we have to take the derivative of this piece over here because of the y. So it'll be plus 2, right, bringing the 2 down in the front. Parentheses, 5 minus x plus y minus 4 times the derivative of the inside, so times 1. And this is equal to 0. So we have to solve both of these equations simultaneously for x and y, and that will give us our critical point. Once we have that, we can compute um, little d, and we can um, verify that what we have is a min. Okay, um, I guess we should simplify this a little bit. It's a little bit nasty, so um, I'm going to squeeze it in down here. So fx, so 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Okay, there's a negative here. you got to be really careful. So 10, and there's a negative, so negative 10. And then this is a negative 2x here, but it's really a positive 2x, so plus 2x. And then this, this time, times this would be a negative 2y. And then this times this is really a plus 8, and that's equal to 0. Okay, let me put an implication arrow here and, and clean this up a little bit more. Uh, it looks like we have 4x, right? We have 2x and 2x, so that's 4x. And then we have um, negative 2y. What about all these numbers here? Let's see. Uh, negative 12 plus 8 um, is negative 4, and that's equal to 0. Okay. And again, we can rewrite this one more time. Maybe write it as 4x minus 2y equals uh, 4. And if we really wanted to, we could divide by 2. So this is 2x minus y equals 2. I'm going to put this in a box so I don't lose it. This is our first equation, right? Now it's our first equation. Now let's work with this fy here. So fy is equal to, I'm going to switch colors, maybe make it a little bit more clear. This is 2y plus 6, right? 2 times 3 is 6. A little bit easier to multiply here. There's no annoying negative at the end, right? So this is 10, uh, right? 2 times 5 is 10 minus 2x plus 2y minus 8. And this is equal to 0. So we have 4y. Right, because we have a 2y and a 2y. Really easy to mess up here. Uh, minus 2x. This problem is a little bit harder than I thought it would be. It looks really innocent. Um, 16 minus 8 uh, is uh, 8. So plus 8, and that's equal to 0. Maybe we can um, write this as negative 2x plus 4y equals negative 8. And uh, so I basically wrote this first subtracted the 8, and I'm going to put this in a box. I didn't divide by 2 because I just noticed something. There's a 2 here. There's a 2x here. There's a 2x here. So now we can add these. I'm going to write these together over here as a system of equations. So we have 2x minus y equals 2. And then we have negative 2x plus 4y equals negative 8. Okay, now we're going to add these. So add. That will give us 0 plus 3y equals negative 6. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice, right? Uh, because that means y is negative 2. That's, that's comforting, right? It's a nice whole number. I'm going to put that in a box. And then we can take the negative 2 and plug it into this equation here, right? This one up here. When we do that, uh, we get 2x minus negative 2. So plus 2 equals 0. Okay, equals 0, I believe. Yep, because it's minus and minus. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Equals equals 2. Sorry, equals 2. 2. So 2x minus minus. So 2. Got a little confused there. So this is 2x equals 0. Right, subtracting 2. That's what I, I was doing that in my head. So you get x equals 0. Very, very good. Let me just check that one more time because uh, I got a little confused there. So it's 2x minus negative 2 equals 2. So that's 2x plus 2 equals 0. Yeah, 2x equals 0. So x equals 0. Okay, so x is 0. All right, so we have x and y. That's our critical point. So our critical point, our CP, is 0, negative 2, right, x, y. 
So we have, uh, now we have to compute fxx. So here is fx up here. This is our fx up here. This is our fx. And this here is our fy right here. I'm going to circle them. Okay. So we have, let me write it again. So fx is 4x minus 2y minus 4. fy is um, 4y minus 2x plus 8. And we have to compute uh, this matrix, or the determinant of this matrix. Little d, if you remember, is fxx at 0, negative 2, fxy at 0, negative 2, uh, fyx at 0, negative 2, and fyy at 0, negative 2. If you didn't do any of this and you just use these numbers, you know, you would get the answer. Uh, but it's really important, you know, to go through the formality and just in case. Sometimes there's situations where you have true critical points and one of them won't work. So in this case, we only have one. The question is asking, where is the minimum? So you know this is going to be the answer. So in theory, you could skip all of this that I'm doing and get to the answer. But I'm going to go through it just to, to be correct. So fxx, well, that's going to be 4. Right, the derivative of fx with respect to x is 4 um, because uh, everything else is 0 uh, because we're taking the partial with respect to x. Fyy is also 4 right? because this is 0 and this is 0. Fxy, so we're taking the derivative of this with respect to y, it's going to be negative 2. And fyx, taking the derivative of fy with respect to x is also negative 2. It's a really good check on your answer, right? These should be the same because everything is continuous. The mixed partials should be the same. So now we can compute little d. So little d is equal to, notice the 0 and negative 2 is irrelevant, right? This will work for any point. So fxx, we have 4, negative 2, um, I, I lost my, my, uh, my little uh, x here. Fyx is negative 2, and this here is 4. Okay. Alrighty. So this is going to be 4 times 4. 4 times 4. Minus, and then negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So this is 16 minus 4. Okay, 16 uh, minus 4. So this is going to be equal to 12. Right, equal to 12. So little d is equal to 12. So we have that little d is equal to 12. And we're supposed to look at fxx in these problems. Whenever we're using the second partials test, you're supposed to look at fxx at this point. And this is 4, and it's positive. So these are both positive. So because we have both of these conditions, by the second partials test, we know there's a min at 0, negative 2. We know that. So in this question, we had to find um, the minimum distance, right? So uh, what was D? Let me go back up top and look at it. So this was our D up here, right? This is our D. And our X and our Y were 0 and negative 2. So all we have to do now is plug in 0 and negative 2 into D, and we get the answer. That's the minimum distance. So let's do that carefully. So this is going to be... So 0 minus 1, so that's negative 1 squared, plus negative 2 plus 1, that's going to be 1 squared, plus, right, because 0 minus 1 is negative 1, boom. Uh, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, so boom. So plus, so we have 5, okay. X is 0, so minus 0, okay. And then Y was negative 2, so minus 2, and then minus 4. And this is squared. So this is equal to the square root of 1 plus 1. Then we have 5 minus 6. So it's going to be plus negative 1 squared. That's 1 plus 1 plus 1. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So we get the square root of 3. And that, my friends, is the minimum distance. So what a messy problem. It took uh, over 14 minutes. I thought I'd be able to do it in two minutes. Um, I guess I should have done it before making the video, but that is the correct answer. And so hopefully uh, it made some sense. That's it.